Hey guys, Eric here with Genic. We're going to go through the row units, setting it up for infield use, a little bit of maintenance, and mostly just setting adjustments, depth, um, and then also singulation and setting your actual meter and running through a little bit of troubleshooting. Yeah. Daily greasing on the machine is uh, pretty simple. So if you look at the undercarriage, the whole frame of the machine, you've got every pivot point um, on your bar and then as well for holding the machine for grease points. On your row unit, very simple daily grease. You have each gauge wheel as a grease zerk on the bushing and then as well as our Paralink arm bushings get a daily grease a couple shots a day. And that's, that's about it for greasing. All right, a few other points of maintenance that we're going to talk about. One, or all of them are very, very critical, very crucial. One is measuring the opening disc to make sure that uh, it's A, shipped properly and B, not worn down. Very, very quick and easy tip is to stick a business card in the top as well as the bottom and then measure the distance between the two business cards. So here you're seeing how much of the blades are actually touching. Too much or too little. Uh, is an issue. So you want an inch and a half to two and a half inches um, between the two business cards. Anything less than that, your discs need to be replaced. And uh, anything more than that, you have to adjust the shimming. So to adjust the shimming on the opening discs, really simple. Pop off your gauge wheel and then uh, take a look at your shimming disc or your disc. And there's shims on either side of the bolt. Move your bolt, you can shim in or shim out. Whenever you take a shim out, you must put it on the back side of the disc and vice versa, just to make sure that you got a tight connection through the shaft. So another pivotal wear point is your C2. In order to access your C2, your row meter comes off. So there's two hex machine screws on either side of your row meter that pops off. And then your C2 has just one pin through it that you can add and remove your C2. Take your C tube off. If you have a used planter, it's important to check. There's a carbide tip on the end of your C tube. You just want to make sure that's not wore. As soon as that gets wore, you want to replace it as that affects your seat placement, uh, depth in the furrow, which as we already know is very, very critical in planting. Okay, so moving on to adjustments. Uh, we're going to go from the rear to the front of the row unit. So from the back, obviously your gauge wheels, or your, uh, sorry, your closing wheels, everybody understands how to adjust that. More to less tension back here. Also, there's two sets of adjustments on the tail to move the units forward or back if you want to split, depending on your soil conditions, seating conditions, etc. You can make those adjustments accordingly. Going forward, we move up to the seed firmer. You have two seed firmer options. Um, either the seed lock wheel, which is what most planters are ordered with from Gen Egg, or you have a Keaton seed firmer. What's in this row unit right here is the Keaton seed firmer. It's a poly drag uh, finger that can be adjusted depth right over here uh, with this pin. Same goes for the seed lock wheel. There's a pin that goes straight through uh, the seed firmer where you can raise it or lower it, giving you some adjustment, or you can easily flip the actual unit up and out, out of the way. Depth adjustment is achieved by moving this pin into different segments and each hole is a quarter inch adjustment. So you can see from the decal on the side uh, as to where you have the planter set. Okay, moving on to the row meter. Uh, we'll start with the row computer just on the back side here. Just a quick note, if you are fate forcing or finding row computer issues, faults, uh, etc., it does happen. It's very simple just to um, replace couple machine screws, the real computer comes out and a new one pops in. Really easy replaceable part. And uh, if you're running a machine that's a few years older, you may get this come up. Going over the components of the meter, uh, we'll start with the inside scraper. Inside scraper, this is the A scraper and is used for corn, soybeans, and then 
you have the bee scraper which you put in for canola or small grains like wheat if you are planting wheat you run your bee scraper the difference is it shuts down your back at a little bit of a different time and uh, affects your singulation and population so one machine screw from the inside as well as one machine screw from the outside just done with an allen key that pops out and then you pop in the other scraper the b scraper the next component of the meter would be your shims if you're drawing a high amp warning you're going to want to have to add a shim or two generally not more than four shims are used in the meter itself if you're still drawing high amp warnings you may have other issues like buildup of debris around the disc um, or something like that that's causing your disc to spin really really hard Next component to the row meter would be the spacer plate. That goes on. These components need to come out if you're changing your inside scraper. If you're just going from corn to soybeans, you don't need to change your inside scraper. It's just a disc change at that point. Here we have the canola disc. We'll toss the canola disc on, and there's only one way, there's only one way that your disc fits on. It's machined out, so you can only put it in one way. All right, so your Horsch Maestro comes with a couple different meter housings. So there'll be one for corn, one for soybeans, and then one for small grains, which would be again, wheat or canola. Each meter housing is just a little bit different. The corn has a different double eliminator or singulator put on here. Um, so if you wanted to increase or decrease your population, or if you're finding in corn, you're having skips or doubles, you can manipulate that knockoff to move more aggressive or least aggressive, as well as an inside uh, or outside scraper, sorry, which is right over here. This is a different component on soybean as it is on corn, and again, different on canola. Another component to your meter housing is your a door that allows more or less grain through. All these settings can be found, initial settings and parameters can be found in your quick start guide. And in there, it'll tell you where to set everything from your back to SOD pressures, all the way to where to actually have your meter housing set for uh, optimum planting conditions. Well, there you have it guys. The basic setup of your row unit on your Horsch Maestro should take you through everything from service to adjustability, anything else, you have all of our numbers, we can run to the field, run through the machine and show you how to better set it up in person. Take it easy.